Hello students, Michael Sanchez here. Welcome to Spotlight Saturday. Every Saturday at 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to be teaching a class that's uh, kind of up in the air as far as what we're going to be doing uh, weekly, but uh, kind of however things go throughout the week with people asking me questions, I decided to kind of just uh, let it roll that way. Um, so this week I got some questions um, from a lot of students regarding key signatures. So I was going to cover that in today's class. Uh, it seems like that might be a good topic uh, to teach you guys on that uh, might be beneficial. We have some students with us today, as usual. I'd like to introduce each of them. We have first Adeline from Germany. Uh, Adeline, it's uh, late there, uh, I'm guessing, again today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's 11 p.m. Very good. Well, you're, you're very dedicated. Uh, Saturday night, 11 o'clock, learning more about the violin. So I, I give you props for that. <laughs> we have also with us Eric. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining us, Eric. And uh, Sophie, hopefully your mic is working today. Oh, hopefully. I didn't hear you there. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Oh, there we go. There we go. Good. Good to see you. So, uh, yeah, I figured today would be a great time to talk about it. I wanted to start, actually, with um, my story on today's uh, parade. So I had all my students in uh, the parade today, and, oh, my goodness, it was freezing. Like, all of our students were just like, you know, like this, and, you know, I, I thought for sure they were going to quit halfway in between. But it went well. Um, me and Christy were on top of the carriage. Uh, they had this, like, Clydesdale um, horses we were on. And uh, I was playing my violin, and uh, I actually had gloves on because there's no way I was going to take them off. And uh, I've never played the violin with gloves on, but that was pretty challenging. My fourth finger wouldn't go down, so I was just basically playing with my three fingers. And then uh, my bow hand was like an icicle, so I was like, <laughs> like this. So I, I, I felt today how many of you might feel as far as having a ten, tense grip. Um, it, was, it was very difficult to play. <laughs> So uh, it was a good time. Uh, all my students uh, handed out candy, and I think it was a good experience. But uh, hopefully next year will be warmer. So, so let's start by uh, talking to each of the students on the class today um, regarding kind of their experience with key signatures and where they're at, and, uh, and then we'll kind of get started from there. Uh, first, Adeline, uh, what do you know about key signatures? Uh, you know, when you get a piece of music, uh, are you pretty capable of reading the, the sheets by, um, you know, understanding the uh, the language, the key signatures? Um, I don't know what the key signatures are uh, in German. I don't know. Oh, that's okay. Uh, basically, um, it's how many sharps or flats are in the, uh -huh. um, the line all the way on the left, uh -huh. uh, which tells you where you put your fingers down. So I probably should have actually said that to everybody what a key signature is because everybody is in a different boat. Some people not, might not know at all. Some people might not even have read music before. So, um, But does that make sense what it is now? The, the yeah, yes. Okay. And what are you able to read? Are you pretty capable of reading like, um, you know, uh, um, G major, D major type stuff? Or how far have you gone with that? Um, so I never played the majors. So this week I started to play them. But uh, I play keyboards, and so I'm. It isn't too bad for me to do that, I think. Very good. So there'll be some good tips for you today, um, and we'll be able to help you hopefully in the future when you pick up a sheet and uh, you're interested in playing it. Eric, uh, I know you've talked a little bit about your experience with it, but maybe just give a brief uh, um, uh, explanation again about where you're at. Well, uh, I've learned music when I was younger. And then I forget, forgot about it for for time. But when I was younger, I learned about key signature and theory. So um, it's not uh, it's something that um, won't come to me in mind uh, that easily. But uh, uh, I'm I think I'm okay with that. Uh, there was uh, something I found a little bit different in the books and mu in piano and violin. In piano, when all the when they indicate all the scales, uh, they indicate the major, and when it's the minor scale, they they, they go with the re min minor relative. So they learn uh, C and A minor. I don't know if it's the same, but I have a violin book, and they they go D major. 
D minor, D, D minor, C major, C minor. That way, it's not the, the same, uh, the, exactly the same structure that for learning that in uh, that in piano in piano books of scales. Very good. So yeah, we're all going to be at different points. So I encourage you guys to ask questions, raise your hand, and I will be more than happy to uh, help you. And uh, anybody out there in the audience can also ask questions by uh, being logged into Google+. Plus. Uh, you're able to uh, text me your questions, and I'll get them live, and I'll be very interested in answering them. Uh, if you're interested in actually joining uh, Eric, uh, Adeline, and Sophie, you must uh, be in my circle. So you can email me at rivertownviolin at hotmail.com, and I will um, put you in my circle to be able to join the classes. Uh, Sophie, where are we at as far as key signatures? Are you there? Yeah. Yeah, so go ahead. You said like it show on the, uh, the first line of the, the music is how many flat and how many sharp. You have to put the finger down and uh, the, um, how many bits uh, for the, the measure uh, we're supposed to count. Very good. Yeah. Yes, exactly what you said. So. Uh, just to reiterate, just to make sure you guys understand what a key signature is, we have what's called the the treble clef symbol in music, and next to the treble clef, which would be here, is what we call the key signature. So that's what we're dealing with. So it's going to look something like like this. So this is uh, two sharps. They look like pound signs. Um, and whenever you see two sharps like this, it means it's in the key of D. So the key signature is saying D major. So that's kind of what we're going to be talking about and how it relates to the violin. So yes, we have sharps and flats, and I'll kind of just briefly um, talk about what a sharp and flat is, the difference, for those of you out there that don't know that. Um, a sharp is basically a symbol that raises the pitch of a note by a half step. A flat is basically a, um, the opposite, where it lowers the pitch of a note by a half step. So let's say we're at this point. This is an E on the D string, first finger on the D string. If we have a sharp, it's going to bring it this way, a half step. If we have a flat, it's going to bring it this way. So this is E. This would be E flat. So if you see, if you saw a flat in the key signature, it might be one of those, one of those flats. So the next thing I want to kind of cover, um, talk about, is the order of sharps and flats. This is really, really important for you guys to know. So I'm going to write on here order. If you guys want to write this down out there, order of sharps, and then order of flats. Okay, so up here, order of sharps is F. Next one is C. Next one is G and D. So those are our order of sharps. Now I'll explain what that means in just a second. And an order of flats is B, E, A, D. It spells a word. Bead. First one really doesn't spell a word, unfortunately, so you have to memorize those. <laughs> order of sharps, order of flats. Okay, now the reason why it's really important to understand the order is because whenever there's one sharp in the key signature, it's always the same. It's never going to be like a random one, like D or F, or sorry, or G. It's always going to be whatever is the first one in the order, F sharp, every single time. So when you see one of those pound signs in the key signature, it's always F sharp, no matter what. That applies to all music. There's never an exception. It's always F sharp. If there's two sharps in the key signature, 
it's always going to be the same all the time, no exceptions. F and C. If there's three sharps in the key signature, it's always going to be the same. F, C, and G. And four sharps, it's always going to be the same. F, C, G, and D. So if you see a key signature that looks like this, I'm going to ask, uh, ask you guys out there, make sure you're paying attention. Adeline, Eric, and Sophie. I'm sure you are paying attention, but I'll quiz you. So if you guys see this, this key signature, this is the key signature. Tell me what the sharps would be. You. Eric? Well, the first one, F, C, G, D. F, C, G, D. That's right. So if, so if you saw this key signature, it would always be the same letters that are sharp. Mm -hmm. Every time. Okay? So let's, uh, let's try another one. Let's make sure you guys understand this. Adeline, I'll, I'll ask you next. If you see this, what is the sharp? Um, F. F sharp. Very good. Okay, and Sophie, if we see two sharps, what are they? It's a C sharp. Yep, F and C sharp, all, all, every time. Okay, so now if we take, uh, we're going to write out some letters here. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. These are all the letters in music. Every single musical instrument is able to play these letters in music. Everyone, piano, guitar, violin, viola, everything. So, unfortunately, uh, music is not simple enough to where it's always going to be these letters that you play. There's sharps and flats, which makes it a little bit more complicated, but it allows you to be able to play a lot more notes, which you couldn't play with just these, these, uh, these seven notes. So in this situation that we just had here, we had two sharps, F and C. So what you would do to this is you would take the F and the C, and you would make it sharp. So let's do that a second. Okay, so now um, if, you, if you guys were to see this, this is the notes that you would be playing on the violin. You'd be playing A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G. Now as far as how that, what that means on the violin, that's going to take some understanding of which notes are which on the violin which could be covered in another class. Um, but basically, if you guys know your scales, you guys will be able to, to be able to tell uh, a lot of times where these notes are. So if I was to play the, um, the D major scale, which is in the key of um, two sharps, these are going to be my finger spots. And it's going to be exactly this. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. It's like that. I just played all these letters. So what I just did is I played the D major scale. So Eric, what what, do you, what would you guess this uh, this set of letters? What what uh, major key are we talking here? Key of uh, very much. Uh, uh, it's D major. Key of D major. Very good. So this I is the key. I always think French. <laughs> Re major. This is the key of D major. Okay. So whenever you see two sharps in the key signature, like this, these are the letters. These are the notes you're going to play. Any questions?
One thing I showed you guys uh, in a previous lesson, and I highly encourage you guys to watch um, last uh, Wisdom Wednesday class, I talked about the uh, Finger Finder tool. This is a really good tool to kind of um, understand theory and how everything works. Because um, if you're not sure where these letters are on the violin, this is going to be a great tool for you. Because basically what you do is you put the finger finder in the key of D major because there's two sharps. You guys notice that there's two sharps down here? This is where you put your fingers. So you have the G string, the D, the A, the E. The opens are just no fingers, zero are no fingers down. Then you have first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger. And this is showing you on the fingerboard where you put the fingers in the key of D major. So all the way across in D major, you put your first finger in the same spot. All the way across. All of the, all of the letters, all of the fingers are in the same exact spot. You have A on the G, you have E on the D, you have B on the A, and you have F sharp on the E. Those are all the letters in D major. Okay, notice um, all of the twos. All the twos are a space apart from the ones, except for the E string. You guys see that? So that's exactly what you would do in D major. You have the second finger a space apart on the G, which is a B. You have the second finger a space apart from the one, that's an F sharp. On the A, it's a C sharp. And then the one that we just were talking about, the low two, that's a G. That's exactly what you just saw in the diagram. I just showed you on the violin. Okay, let's talk about the threes. So you see the threes, uh, one of the threes is far away from the two, and the rest of them are, are, these two are touching, and then this one is a space apart as well. The thing that's important to understand in first position is that there's two possibilities of spacings. It's always going to be two possibilities. It's either a whole step or a half step. And that's what you should be looking at in this particular diagram, is that there's one of two possibilities. It's either my second finger is a space apart from my three or my second finger is touching the three. There's two possibilities. Never, it's never going to be in a different spot than that. It's either a whole step or a half step. And the more you play, the more you're going to feel exactly where those holes, how far that is. That just takes practice. Um, so let's, let's quick look again at, at the third fingers. You have third finger on the G is, is away from the two. You have uh, third finger on the D is touching the two. On the A, it's touching the two, and then on the E, it's uh, space apart. Let's take a look. So on the G, I showed you a second ago that the, the two is here, correct? The three, like we just saw in the diagram, wasn't touching the two. It's actually a space apart. And notice that it's ex the exact same distance as it is from the one to the two. One, two, three. This space is exactly the same as that space, the same distance. A, B, C sharp. You guys remember the sheet, right? A, B, C sharp. Okay, on the D string, remember we had one and then we had F sharp. This is what we saw on the D string. But did you see in the diagram that the three wasn't here, it was touching. So you have E, F sharp, G. E, F sharp, G. Okay, that's the D string. Let's talk about the A. So we had one, then we had C sharp, and then we had D. It wasn't, a, it wasn't away from the two in the diagram, right? It was next to the two. These are touching. So we have B, C sharp, D. B, C sharp, D. Now the one notes I was skipping, I was skipping the open. So if you're wondering, well, where's the A and where's the E and so on, those are the open strings. 
those are just the E, A, D, G. Those are just those ones. I, I was skipping. Okay, on the E string, we have open. Then we have F sharp, first finger. We just talked about that a second ago. Then we have G, touching. And then in the diagram, do you notice that it was a space apart? So we have F sharp, G, A. Now, this three is not the same all the way across, right? It's actually high three on the G. So we have high three on the G, normal three all the way across. And look at the diagram to, to see, um, reiterate that. Look at the third fingers. We have one that's high on the G, and then the rest of them are normal. Notice that there's a whole step between two and three on the G. There's a half step between two and three on the D. Half step, whole step. On the G, whole step, half step, half step, whole step, because the two is low. Okay? Now, as far as uh, scales, scales are really good. But unfortunately, they don't cover all of the notes. And as you can see in this diagram, you guys notice where the blue dots are? That's where the scale is starting. The scale starts on open D, because every scale starts on the letter that you're dealing with. So you're always going to start a D major scale on a D. But that means that all these notes back here, the G, A, B, C sharp, are technically not in the scale. So you, you just have to know where those go because the, D, the, the scale won't cover those notes because the scale starts here. D, E, F sharp, G. This is A, also opens A. These are the same notes. Uh, fourth finger on the D and open A are the same letter, same pitch. And then we have uh, B, C sharp, D. So remember, okay, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, uh, D. Exactly what we just showed you here. So the D major scale started on open D. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. That's exactly what we just showed you. There's uh, different perspectives. So, And the D major scale can keep going up. Uh, the only thing is, if you technically do go up to the next set of notes, you're going to have to go into third position. <laughs> but technically, you would, you could keep going. You could, okay, this would be an E, then that's an F sharp, G, A, B, and there'd be two more notes down here, which would be C sharp and D. And this also does have uh, different sheets for different positions, just to let you know. Um, so I'll quick show you this just for the more advanced people out there. This is the third position set of notes for D major. To come closer here so I can see. So the same concept, though. If, if you guys are kind of more beginner, this might go over your heads. This is a different position on the violin. This is um, in third position. C sharp, D, E, G. A, B, so on. So basically the notes in third position, you're dealing with different notes. So don't worry about that if, you, uh, if you're if you kind of newer. Uh, just kind of start with the first position for sure. You guys have any questions so far? Yes, Adeline. I, I got this today. I, I bought it from the U.S. I saw it uh, last week in the uh, Wednesday class, and I mm -hmm. thought it's very good to have it because uh, I want to learn the scales, and so I bought it, and it's, I think I can learn next week with it. It's very great. <laughs> yeah, it's a great tool. Um, it really helps to just show, you know, um, how to play certain songs and different key signatures. Um, so we talked so far today on the D major, but there is different keys. I don't want to overwhelm you guys out there, but these are all the key signatures in, in music. So we talked about D today, but everything you see on the top line, that's all of the key signatures in music. Now, pretty much when we start playing, we only need to know these. Uh, it's hard to do this backwards here. <laughs> um, D, 
through C, you kind of start learning those three. So understanding where the fingers go in those three keys is a really good start to playing the violin because um, about 75% of music you're going to see is in these three keys, either with no sharps, one sharp, or two sharps. That's very common. Obviously, you want to know more than that, but that's a good place to start. Any other questions? I'm noticing a lot of comments. Um, Deborah is uh, watching from the audience. She says she's a piano background, and uh, you know she's able to understand kind of the concepts about the notes. So I'm glad that you're able to understand that. Everybody's in a different boat. Um, people that have a piano background are definitely going to get this probably easier. Those that have never played a musical instrument, this might take a little longer. So uh, everybody's in a different boat, but hopefully this helped you, uh, all you st students out there to understand a little better. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching, Deborah. Notice also uh, Colleen from the audience is watching as well. She says she's not feeling well. I hope, you're, hope you feel better. Um, we have a few other students uh, speaking different languages to me that I don't understand. <laughs> so um, Tor Torre, Torre, I think. Um, I understand Spanish, but I don't understand, uh, I think it might be French. Maybe I'll have to send Eric the, the message, see if he, get, he understands that. <laughs> it's pretty cool just having the, uh, the worldwide audience. So, you know, uh, everybody speaks different languages, but uh, it's cool that music is the universal language. You know, it's like everybody can hear and understand, you know, good music. So that's pretty cool. But uh, I might have to get a Google Translator for maybe the future. So, very good. Well, thank you guys all for watching. Um, hopefully today you guys learned a lot about key signatures. I got the idea to do this class uh, by a student, um, James. Uh, he suggested that I do this class, and he said it would really help him. So I hope this helps you, James, and um, every, anybody else out there. Feel free to email me if you have any, any ideas regarding concepts. Um, I kind of take it you know, week by week, class by class, as far as choosing what to cover the, uh, the material. So I kind of want to um, do it um, depending on what my students are interested in. So please uh, email me. You can go on my website, violentutorpro.com, superiorviolence.com, and live chat me. Um, and I will be available to talk to you about uh, some different things, um, some ideas you might have. And uh, I encourage you guys to share this video. I've actually been um, talking a lot to some different people, and uh, we're just really trying to get the word out there. Um, for more people to learn the violin and, and uh, you know I, I think a lot of students out there um, get discouraged because they're not able to learn properly so this class hopefully is is there for you guys to learn but uh, we need as many people as possible to get the word out um, so sharing really helps uh, it helps the rankings in YouTube and stuff and so I hope you guys if you do like the video please share it um, and uh, please also join our Facebook page. Uh, it's facebook.com slash violin tutor pro. We've been getting a lot of uh, great response on there with a lot of students um, finding us. And I uh, hope that uh, all you students out there that haven't joined the class yet um, are interested in maybe in the future. I got a few uh, emails today from some people that want to join. Um, and I think it's a great social aspect too, um, having students meet each other and interact, which is fun from all over the world. So. Uh, thank you guys for joining us, um, Adeline, Eric, and Sophie. I appreciate your participation today. So um, look forward to seeing you guys in, in uh, classes to come, and uh, just let me know if you guys have any questions. Have a good day.